Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. In the last episode, we were making a quick pit stop at the Proving Grounds before we go and track down Javia, as the Shaperet wanted us to see if we could find a book that had been stolen, and we have reason to believe that it's probably knocking about somewhere in here. Now then, we'd have proving fans. Uh, Basil over there, but I don't think that's who we're looking for. Hmm. And I don't think they're down this way either. To be perfectly honest, I'm not entirely sure what Basil's deal is. I don't I don't really recall him. Like off the top of my head. Aha! Thugs! I knew Ooh, do do do. I knew the shaper stuff would be risky. Coin for the man who takes the warden down. Let me start my timer. There we go. Okay. Oh, God. Excuse me. Don't don't knock me off the floor. Flurry. There we go now. Who's left? Oh god. Oh, there's just this poor random guy who's just standing there like Jesus. Uh you, I think. Oh, excuse me, what is going on here? Um, there we go. I hope I don't get blood all over me again. Come on, Arthur. There we go. Die quickly. And he's down. There we go. Uh, Jertrin. Hmm. A volume of Shaper history. A volume of Ozama history focusing on the relationship between ancestor lineage and the granting of mining permits in the dead trenches. It is not supposed to be removed from the shape rate. Hmm. Uh, no one else has anything. This deal was all their making, Warden. Technically, I haven't done anything wrong. We have no business. Unless you want to make a few coins. Not that I'm suggesting anything, but you're holding the prize now. You don't care who you get the shape rate tome from. You know what? I'll take the deal. I should shut you down hard. Ooh. So I've mentioned this before. I I view Artin's alignment, if you want to use D and D terms, as pretty lawful neutral. Yet, she accepted the smuggling job from Rogek. And, to be perfectly honest, I kind of took that on impulse. Also based on the fact that, you know, like, throughout this, I've kind of played Artin as being quite... money-wise, for want of a better word. You know, like, we're fighting a blight, we're one person, we don't really have any government backing, we need to make money. Yet, if Artin is lawful, why would she have accepted the smuggling job? And if if she was willing to accept that smuggling job, why wouldn't she be willing to sell the shape rate tome to this guy? I mean, it's just a book. It's just some pieces of paper. It's nothing like... It's, it's not like it's someone's baby or like anything like that. It's a book. They might have copies of it, whatever. And, like I said, I've been thinking about that quite a bit, actually. Because it's been a week since I, I last recorded Dragon Age. And, upon giving it some thought, I reckon Artin took the smuggling job. Because Rogek was castless. And the castless need money. That, you know, they more than anyone else have to resort to doing illegal things. And also, if I'm being blunt, I've mentioned this before, Artin 
Art infuse crimes in quite a um like like she doesn't really mind deserters. People running away from the army because they're scared. She really doesn't care about deserters because if you force them to fight, then they could panic on the battlefield, which would demoralize the army. They could start attacking their fellow soldiers, which would, you know, take out your own people. Or they could try and desert whilst the battle is going on. And if other soldiers see people deserting, and they they would probably be more likely to go, oh crap, the battle clearly isn't going as well as it should. I'll do what that guy does. Hence, Artin doesn't mind deserters. If those deserters steal supplies, then she has a problem with them because you're potentially killing your fellow soldiers. And with that in mind, I don't think Artin really minds smugglers. Smugglers and thieves who have good reason for their thievery. So someone stealing a loaf of bread because I'm starving, I wanted that bread so I could eat it. Fair. A thief who says, I stole this necklace because lol. No, no, no. So I, I think that's why Artin took Rogue X deal. She doesn't really mind smugglers. And a little bit of a, you know, a cash injection into the castless is is never really a good thing. They need the money. But this guy, also given what the tome is, it was about mining permits. This guy's probably mining cast and he's probably trying to look for like some kind of legal loophole into getting a mining permit. So that, that's like one strike you know, there, too. I think Artin does respect the shape rate. And this is, this is like Ozamar knowledge. It might seem like meaningless knowledge, but it is their knowledge. And I don't, I don't think she could settle with herself making this deal. I should shut you down hard. Yes, well, I'll keep my nose clean until you're long gone. How about that? I'm just a businessman. I merely exploit opportunities. I won't get in your way. Hmm. I... I don't know about that guy. Because... One, how did that... The, the castless thug, um, Shady Corbett... Colbert, something like that. The first guy. How did he manage to get into the diamond quarter? The guards would have stopped him way before he made it up there. So he must have had help. Two, even if he made it up there without any help, that's such an odd book to steal. And yet, may maybe Shady Corbett can't read. And he just grabbed the most expensive looking thing. But still, it's, it's very odd. Now that we're gonna get banter? You must know hey. that murder is wrong, I assume. I'm sorry, are you speaking to me? That is why you wish to leave your crows. A crisis of conscience. Yes, that is exactly it. Joke if you wish, but I have the feeling that deep down you regret the life you have lived. It is true, I regret it all. Oh, must you be such a child? Are you incapable of a single serious conversation? I know. I'm terrible and it makes me sad. May I rest my head in your bosom? I wish to cry. You can cry well away from my bosom, I'm certain. <laughs> Did I tell you I was an orphan? I never knew my mother. Eh, hey, Gad. I give up. Oh god, Zevran! Zevra and I love him so much, just, ah, the old biddy wants to lecture me. I'm going to try and turn this around to see if I can see some titties. Good for you, Zevran. Good for you. Never change. Oh my god. <laughs> to be fair, I can understand why he wouldn't be too... Oh, that's just a commoner. I can understand why he wouldn't be too receptive. I wouldn't be too receptive, because Wynne came from that from a very... You do know that murder is wrong, I so, you know, I presume. Like, a very judgmental place. Hmm. No, thank you. 
Now then, Zelinda! Yes, we, we persuaded her father to take her and her son back. You're back? I thought you weren't coming. What did he say? Your father wants you both to come home. What did you want me to do again? Oh, sorry, I haven't asked yet. Let me get back to that. Your father wants you both to come home. Both of us? I don't believe he said that. I've never heard him refer to my son as anything but trash. He calls him it. But maybe. Maybe Mother convinced him. Or you did. Oh, my friend. I cannot thank you enough. If this were a story, my son would grow to manhood and pledge himself as a knight in your service. When he grows up, I will send him to you. I promise. Oh, Zelinda, that that really isn't necessary, but I'm I'm glad she got to go home. Even I mentioned this at the time because her her dad referred to her as a whore, which, you know, not not a nice thing to do at all, but I I do think he loves her. I think he was being prideful and very, very stupid. But I think I think he does love her, and now that he knows what it's like to live without her, I'm hopeful that maybe he'll be a bit more appreciative of his daughter, and that over the years he can come to look at his grandson as, you know, not just, you know, a castless thing, but as his grandson. A suspicious door. Very well. This door appears to be made of solid stone. There are no visible means of opening it. On closer inspection, there is a small slot concealed in a fold of the stone, just big enough for a finger. Look through the slot, put finger bone token in the slot, do nothing. Let's, let's put the uh, token in the slot. The door unlocks. And in we go. Little brother was rather desperate that we uh, get to this as soon as we possibly could. And we don't want to disappoint him. I... I don't trust any of this. I... I remember there being a load of traps down here. What's the password? Uh-oh. Balin rules forever. Haramont rules forever. Jarvius sucks lizard eggs. I don't know. No, wait. I remember. Dice come. Oh, God, I hate all of these. Genuinely, I hate all of these because these are so jokey. And I've mentioned this before. Artin's, Artin's getting better with joking. Like, I think she's feeling like you know, in a comfortable place where she's like, occasionally, every other Tuesday, I can make a joke. But when she's in the field, hell no. So not two, three, or four. And I don't... I don't think Artin is either violent enough to say number five, or... As, as I mentioned before, she's got a lot of empathy for the castless. So I don't think she'd call them scum. Guess, guess that leaves me with the number one, then. Uh-oh. Looks like we have a martyr, boys. I'm only a martyr if I die. And I don't think I will. Him, flurry. Get him. There we go. Now you. Oh, yeah. Come on, Arthur. Sweep. Nice. Him. Uh, Zevron, as you're just so keen to stand about, why don't you go after that guy? There you go. There we go. Oh. No, you don't. No running away. Very well. Yes. Excellent. Now, what is this? 
Because this looks... I, mean, I, I was about to say this looks way too ornamental to be a fireplace, but it does actually seem to be a really fancy fireplace. Hmm. This will sound really stupid, but just, just because there's like a table and chairs there, like, my... <laughs> My brain's just kind of gone, ooh, this would be a really nice feature at, like, a restaurant. Like, like, you know, like, you know, kind of like a sushi bar, the plates of sushi come along. If instead it was, like, skewers of meat and you, you know, like, you're, you're sitting there and you put your skewer and you let it cook and then you can just take it straight off the fire. Admittedly, it would also probably be breaking numerous health and safety codes fire regulations, but like, I, I think that'd be a cool idea. Now, did you drop anything? No. Okay. Now then, hmm. Oh. Just more thugs. Oh, oh. Everyone hold. I'll go on ahead. Okay, crap. There we go, everyone can stop holding, and everyone get on this guy. I'll go after him. Stun him! And- oh! That's my trick! Thank you, Win. Now then, I'm- To be honest, I really can't remember this map. I don't know why most of the maps I have down in my brain, but the, the Carter hideout is one just for whatever reason, I can never really seem to remember it. Jesus, that guy was loud. Who was that? I think it was him. I'm blaming him. Three. Oh, oh dear. Come on. Oh dear. Come on, Martin. There you go. You're down. Let's deal with you next. And sweep. Uh, now you. Oh. You can get kicked. Come on, ooh, win. Win will be okay. You can get flurried. Doke. As you say. Yes. What do you all have? It will be done. Lovely. Hmm. So I'm guessing this is just like like a bunk room or something. It will be done. Okay, and Jammer's yes. journal. Ooh. Oh, I remember this one. Jammer's stash. Been a profitable season. Kenki. Cutthroat 2. Oh, that's a name. Excuse me. Been a profitable season, Kenki. Cutthroat 2. So we got to be careful. I'm taking my half top side so I can get a good price. Your half is in my stash box. It's got one of Peak's locks on it. Standard drill, you need the three pieces of drunk from our common chess to try to even try to open it. She set them up high low because you've got the best eye for value in this dig. So yes, I faked some loot. Take only the cheapest looking piece in each chest and you'll be able to open the stash box. I wired the expensive looking stuff as bait. You take the right one or you don't. And if you don't, Hope you like having a limp. Good luck, Jammer. Yeah, I... I remember this quest. And I don't like it. Hmm. I think I'm gonna see what's over here, because I don't... I don't think this is the way forward. Uh, you... Oh! Huh, the Carter are able to hire Kunari mercenaries. Pay for that. And can you 
Kick him, Martin. There you go. There we go. Uh, now you, I think. Cost. Lovely. Thank you. Stop running. Kick him. Ooh, nice decapitation. Oh, oh crap, there's a guy over there. But, hey, they're in sync. We both decapitated people at roughly the same time. I, they were meant to be guys. I'm telling you. Oh God, that's so messed up. We decapitate people. Clearly we're soulmates. Oh God. Okay, um... Didn't fight anyone out there. We have this chest. Mm, very nice. And a long wood, a long bow made of sylvan wood. Hmm. Don't think that's better than what Liliana has, though. Yep. Yeah, nothing else in here. Again, another uh, bunkhouse-looking thing. It seems. Oh, I see you. I see you over there. I'm sure you see us, but hey, like you, you carry on your conversation. Hello. Kick him. You shall not touch me. No, no fighting the mages. Thank you. Austin Severin, if you would maybe like to consider helping out, that'd be great. And no stunning enemy for you. You are down. Lovely. All right, lads. Uh, Ze Zevron, Zevron, please help me. Please don't just stand there looking at me as I go unconscious. Uh, oh, oh no! I've been, I've been shot. I've been shot. I hope I don't get blood all over my head. Here we go. Okay. I do not have oh, yes. And ah, down you go. You will pay for it. Go down. Come on, guys. I will fight if I There we go. Okay. But did these guys drop anything? They did. <laughs> Thank of you. Yes. Oh, lovely. I uh, I think at some point I need to go back to the Dalish and stock up on a health health root. Elf root. There we go. Just so that I can make myself a whole bunch of uh, poultices. Yes. As you say. And a chest. Dwarven war axe. Lovely. Okay. Good stuff. Hmm. Yeah, I I wanna say that the big long, you know, corridor is the way to Javia. Well, at least on the, the mini-map, we can see this is just a dead-end room. We will need to fight shortly. Oh, no, 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 no. Of course. Okay. Yes. Stun her. Okay. <laughs> Excellent. Oh! Hey, buddy, I didn't see you when I came in here. Uh, 
Up button. I mean, if you want to fight from on top of the bed, you can. I'm not going to stop you, but... Oh, actually, maybe... Maybe that's a better angle. There you go. Get in on them backstabs. Oh. And flurry. There we go. Now then. Mr. Kunari Man. There we go. Kanki's common box. Ooh, do, 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 do. As you say. Thank you. Okay. So we need to take... We need to take the cheapest. Okay. Emerald costume ring. A costume ring that appears to be made of an expensive material. Gold costume ring. And silver costume ring. I, I don't remember this, so I'm going to Google it. <laughs> I'm sorry, like, I, uh, oh god, to be honest, if, if I had remembered that this quest was coming, um, oh, sorry, Google is telling me news about the Queen, and I'm like, I don't need this, but thank you. What was I saying? Yeah, if, if I had remembered that this quest quest was coming, I probably would have looked this up beforehand and written it down. But I I didn't. I completely blocked this quest out of my memory. So now I have to look it up during the episode. Uh, Kanki. There we go. Kanki's box. Come on. Dragon Age Wiki, what do you say? Come on. Okay. Silver costume ring. And then we leave it. We ignore everything else. Let me get back to my timer. Where you at, timer? There you are. Okay. I'm gonna be honest, it's... It's gonna annoy me knowing that this is back here because i i don't like leaving loot behind but this loot is explosive and hurts hmm. and is oh i'm not sure let's see what does uh, what does the mini map have to say about this Hmm. I don't know. Hmm. You know what? I think I think I'm gonna try this door first. What? Oh, where's the trap? Oh, A trap. grab it! No, 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 no! Excuse me. That was incredibly rude, but. Apparently you managed to disarm the trap whilst unconscious, Artin. Good work. Post. Come on, who oh dear? There you go, Artin. Oh, oh, I did not see you back there. Artin, Artin, go help win. Go help win. No attacking the mage. You can get kicked. There we go. Now then. You can get rep Oh, how dare you, sir! Now you, uh, Severan, would you like to be helpful? Thanking you. Kick him. There we go. Oh, excuse me. X. 
Excellent. Okay. Yes. So it looks like this was actually a dead end room. And oh, again. This guy. Oh. Yeah, it happened again. We took his clothes and he melted. He became one with the stone to hide his shame. Oh, I love it so much. Now then, over here. Thank you. Oh, lovely, we can sell those arrows. And a ah, studded leather helmet. Okay. I'm good with that. Nothing else in here, it seems. Which means this is the way forward. Okay. But unfortunately, I am just about out of time for this in da 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 <laughs> I am just about out of time for this episode. In the next, we will continue making our way through the Carter hideout. But until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below, and if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next episode.